he had seen something I didn't see. It was a, a guy come up with RPG and, uh, and he felt like if he would have kept moving, I was drawing the fire to me, the guy would have fired an RPG and hit me. So he stopped, exposed himself and shot that guy before that RPG went off and saved, and saved my life. Fast forward number six, we we're there weeks before setting up the operation. We we're in Batacoot, again, this, you know, forming village. And I remember we parked, we parked like in these pine trees. We we're in Hilux, parked in these pine trees. And, we, and, and he wanted to walk across this field. And I remember being kind of irritated with him because it, it was, it was freaking cold, windy, like snowing. And his field was like muddy. And I'm like tromping through snow, wet, snowy mud. Like, I'm like, what are you taking us through this mud for? Are and, you guys dressed in local garb? Oh yeah, totally local. All that stuff. Yeah. And not trying to just throw man jammies on and like, like it wasn't like dress up normally. I thought we dressed every day. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like, and I don't mean like, like some like cargo pants and, and shoes and, and like not all Afghans wear man jammies. Right. So, uh, but, uh, so just dressed like a normal Afghan. I had a pretty gnarly beard, like my year old <laughs> and, uh, always had, I always had peanut butter from protein bar stuck in it. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, you know, th those things are like super important too. Like, Hey, you can wear a pakul in this area and, and you're cool. You wear a pakul here and you're getting pulled over. Like, I mean, don't walk there. Don't eat that. Don't talk to that person. If you talk right now, they're going to, they're going to know you're not a door speaker and they're going to kill us. Like, like he saved my life every single day through just that. Right. Don't wear that hat. This little picture of Masood we're going to have hanging on our, on our, on our windshield uh, on our rear view mirror, which works in this town, but take that crap off in this town because we're gonna get shot for having it. All that stuff, like every single day, like he keeps you, he kept me alive. You know, not just in in those you know life saving moments. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, so we're walking across this field, and I'm I'm being a total like butthead towards him, like giving him a hard time, and uh, and we get across this field, and there's this old and, and this old man. That's like, you know, sitting on the side of the road in the middle of the snow and the wind, just squatting there. I don't know why Afghans do that. Like, just sitting here squatting on the side of the road in the snow. And, uh, and we see him and Aziz starts talking to him. And, uh, and I could tell, like, it was a pretty serious conversation. I couldn't understand everything they were saying. But, uh, they, he had, he was telling Aziz, like, you need to get him, me out of there because the Taliban was in the area and they're, they're looking for the foreigner, which, was me. There's no other foreigners in Batakut, Afghanistan, besides me. And so somehow they, they knew I was there, uh, probably just being seen there, and and they were looking for 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 us. And so as he's like, "Hey, brother, we have to go," because um, it wasn't like they're around the area; like he had just seen them. And so we start walking back across this field. <laughs> you warned me. I don't want to tip your table over. <laughs> yeah, we start walking back across this field, and uh, you know, when you find something like that out, by the way. Like, it's easy for me just to say that, but if you think about the mindset of that, like, I'm in Batacoot, Bagrams. If you drove to Bagram, it would take a day and a half. Uh, I don't have a radio. There's no QRF coming to get me. I have a, I have a, a AKS, uh, as easy as AK-47. We have a few magazines in, in, our, back, in our bags, a hand grenade in our bags. A uh, pistol and a waistband. That's it. Like, uh, and so imagine that, you know, that's the scenario. You're by yourself, like in that feeling, and like the Taliban's here, a couple of truckloads, and they're looking for you. Like, you know, and so walking back across that field, that's a large open danger area now. And so the first thing I tell Aziz is like, because again, these guys are in the area. Like, hey man, like if if we get hit through this field, because it's a big field, if we get hit through this field, like. We had, we had trained before together. Like we're gonna we're gonna have to bound out of here. Like we're in this open danger. We we literally were talking about that, uh, and, get, and we we're about a hundred yards from that road, and and they drive behind us, three trucks, and, and the three Hollux trucks. By the way, were they were so confident in being there, they had their black flags flying with the white writing on and Taliban flags. Uh, I, I still can't remember. Usually I have vivid memory of the things, but I can't remember if one or two of the trucks had a PKM mounted on the top. Uh, but. They hit the brakes, start backing up, and uh, you know now buttholes oh, buckering, right? 
And uh, they stop and they get out. And me as he's still talking during that time, by the way, not that, not that it matters, but I don't know the reason to get into details. Of, me and me as he's changed guns and gun bags because uh, that ACAS was having some problems. And he felt like I was a better shooter. He's like, here, take this rifle. And I didn't argue with him. We just, we just switched guns. And, uh, and he, uh, we were, we were, we were talking about, you know, basically bounding out of there if anything happened. But, I, but at the time I went from being nervous to like super calm because I was thinking like maybe my confidence overtook me. Not compl- I wasn't complacent, but my confidence overtook me. Like what I was talking about earlier is there no random, bi- I don't see random violence happening. They can't drive in that field. That field I was complaining about, now I know they can't drive in it. So I felt good about that because they were get stuck and, and they're not going to just randomly kill us because they don't know who we are. Right. So I'm like, if we just ignore them and keep walking. We're good to go. That's what I was thinking. So I hear them start yelling and, and I didn't understand what they were saying. They were definitely talk, speaking in Pashtun. Uh, not Dory, and, and but then I heard the word stop, uh, Bosh, hey, Bosh, Bosh, and 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 they're yelling, so now they're yelling it aggressively, so they're yelling us to stop, and uh, that probably the only thing that stopped is my heart, like, in, in a moment, and, um, but I still was like, you know, we just keep up until disease, and not disease, just like, hey, brother, just keep looking straight, keep walking, I'm trying to walk towards the, the tree line, and uh, I heard a, I don't know what I heard first, if I heard a, the gun go off or that that boom, over my head, the air crack over your head. I don't know what I heard first, but I remember hearing both distinctly. Like the, I heard, I heard a, a gunshot and I heard the round, the air crack over our heads. And, uh, and in that moment, man, it's like, if I run, they're going to kill us, uh, in that muddy field. And if we give up, they're going to capture us or kill us. And so I, I just felt like the only option to do was to fight. And, uh, that's really, really is the only option. And so I just, I told Aziz, man, get ready to move. And I, and I just did an about face. And the first person I saw, I shot. Like, as I, I, I turned, and as my gun came up, I saw a guy, a red, I saw a red Hilux truck, a bunch of guys, but I, I saw this guy uh, standing there, and he has AK in his hand, and he's just standing by the passenger door. And I just shot two rounds right center mass. And when I, when I did, I thought I missed him because the window, the first thing I saw was the window. <laughs> behind him and so i thought i missed him and hit the window and uh but then he fell i think he went back and hit the window he fell and when he fell i, I fired those two rounds and i was expe- i was kind of didn't know what to expect but i was expecting like a gunfight and I'm, I'm yelling for aziz to move i'm yelling i'm expecting a gunfight and they all just like stopped i think they were i think they didn't think we would fight back and they got shocked them so everybody just stopped like like if you shoot a deer and then, and then one deer falls, and all the deer are like, that's kind of what it was like. And then they all rushed. They, instead of shooting back, they all converged between the two vehicles to go get cover behind the vehicle. And so I just went between the two. I didn't, I didn't aim at anybody. I just went to the convergence point and just started emptying my magazine in that convergence point. And I'm just yelling as he's to move, as he as he starts moving. And I, and I, what distance are you? A hundred yards, super close for that. Yeah. Uh, and then after they got behind the vehicle, before Aziz got set, I, I started hearing the gunshots. It started slow. It started pop, 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 and then, and then just like chaos. And uh, and then when I heard Aziz start shooting, and he yelled, he yelled. I started moving, and uh, and I don't know how. Like we're in the mud, so normally you would see like dirt flying up everywhere. I didn't see any of that. Like I've seen that before. I didn't see any of that, and I don't. Know, I can't explain how. Like God protecting us, whatever. I never seen dirt fly up, nothing from around us. Hundred yards away, twenty to thirty guys. Uh, never seen Holy any of that. Holy shit! And uh, and so the third iteration of a, of us starting to move, um, I remember like, and this all happened obviously very fast. Uh, as as I'm shooting, I saw Z stop. And you know, for those that know about uh, lateral Australian peel or bounding, and the reason we're going laterally is backwards was just field we were just going down range so we were going laterally to the tree line we were going laterally right staying right in front of them and uh and the reason you're doing you're you're holding a base of fire is not just to cover the guy but to draw fire to get attention off that guy while he's moving and so you never stop you never shoot you don't shoot move because you want the want me to draw i want to draw fire for him to move and we're doing it right out in the open and uh and so i seen as he stop and i remember peripheral thinking why is he stopping and then I seen him shoulder his 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 rifle, and I'm like, "What is he doing?" And then and then he shot, and uh, and when he shot, 
uh, he had he had seen something I didn't see. It was a, a guy come up with RPG, and uh, and he felt like if he he felt like if he would have kept moving, I was drawing the fire to me. The guy would have fired an RPG and hit me. So he stopped, exposed himself, and shot that guy before that RPG went off and saved and saved my life. Damn, and, uh, I, I didn't see it. Uh, he would have fired it off. I would have a hundred yards. I would have, I would have been dead. And uh, when that happened. Uh, and I realized what happened. I think at that point, I seen we were close enough to the tree line and went, the tactics went out the window. I'm just like, run. And we just ran like, like uh, neither one of us shooting anymore. We just ran to the tree line. And we got that tree line. Well, I got to our truck, went back to the safe house and got it, got in touch with the command. It took us a little while to figure out how to communicate. We told them what happened. And, uh, and the command was like basically trying to decide, is this a, was this a compromise or chance contact? Right. That's important. Yeah. Right. It was just was just the, is the operation con- compromise or was this just Taliban out there? There's a foreigner. They want to know who it is, and and and, uh, and it was Aziz that said he could he could have got us out of the operation, got himself out of it, but he's like, nah, man, this guy these guys don't know of anything about what we're doing. We need to stay here. We got we got to finish this. Not even a question. And uh, and the command trusted his decision off that. And I don't think the command told really. It was like they were, I think everybody was like, hey, let's not. Make it a big deal because we don't want to you know, sweep this one under yeah, the rug. Yeah, we, we don't want to let do, it, it get in the way of the operation. Yeah, and uh, because everybody wants you know when you get a top ten guy, everybody wants him. So and so yeah, so they we, they kept going about and about ten days later, I, I couldn't I, not exactly, but about ten days later, uh, they we launched it and then uh, they they killed him. They killed number number six. So hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.